Hello! If you're watching this video, you probably have like a Void 4 hero or something and you've just unlocked the Cloud Island. Well done. Or you just like watching my videos, in which case, awesome, welcome. And have you subscribed yet? If not, subscribe and then you get recommended more of my videos, which is always a good thing, I think. Moving on, today we're going to be talking about the Cloud Island tenants and which Cloud Island buildings you should focus on, which tenants are important, and how you can pretty much, without any help from me, just easily work out for yourself which heroes are the better heroes to use as tenants. So today is a big lesson in how the Cloud Island works in tenants. So let's go and take a look. So let's assume you don't know anything about tenants or homeowners. If you go to the Celestial Island, you'll notice there's an area called the Cloud Island in the corner, and it will normally tell you you need a Void 4 hero to unlock this. Now, for anyone that doesn't know what a Void 4 hero is, it's when you have these four nodes in light blue around the faction of your hero. So if you look at my Aspen here, he's Void 4, everyone else is as well. These are all got these Tree of Origins underneath. You don't actually need any Tree of Origin improvements, just the Void 4, which will look like this when fully completed. For this, you need 5 million Stellar Shards and a 10 star for each improvement, so that's 4 10 stars in total after you have gotten to E5. It takes some time to achieve those Stellar Shards, so let me stress, as we always do, it's really important whenever you get a Transcending Sphere, always turn us into Stellar Shards, because Stellar Shards are a really important resource for void imprinting your heroes. Anyway, let's assume you've done all that and you've unlocked the Cloud Island. Well, what happens next? Well, you will get presented with an area that actually looks a little like this one here in the top corner for me. It will just be a building. And in this place, you can go ahead and add additional buildings like the Weave Field, the Central Market, the Dining Table, and the Spring Well. These will cost gold and gems. And by adding these to the area, you unlock different locations where you can place tenants. Now, if we take a look at this building here for my Fairy Queen Vessa, you will see that the tenants are giving bonuses to my heroes in proportion to the attack and HP of that particular hero. Now, it may be your assumption that attack and HP, because it's different for every hero, each hero is going to be different as to whether they're a good tenant. And that was commonly believed to be the case, but actually it doesn't quite work like that. Transcendence heroes are always the best tenants because their stat increases are incredibly high. So if you look at this jar, for example, she's giving a ton of stuff. Now it helps that she's Tree of Origin 5, of course, that's going to give a ton of stuff. She's also wearing a flag. We'll talk about flags a little later, but flags really help out tenants as well. But basically, the more stats you can throw in on these heroes, you get a massive increase to attack and HP. Now what's also interesting is no matter how powerful the hero is, you also gain a fixed speed increase, which is proportional to the level of the building. So you can see all my levels here are 105, and that gives us 212 extra speed. Now, what's important about level 105 is 105 can only be achieved by skins. So that's another thing you need to know when a Viking Saga event comes along, or you can purchase these in the Starry Gem Mall as well. Basically, these skins will add five levels to your Celestial Island buildings. And also, upgrading Celestial Island buildings will require resources, which you can see if I go look at my Asmodel building over here, and these will be different for each building. So for the first building, you're going to need wood and normal toolboxes, and then eventually Master's toolboxes as well. For the second building, which is the Central Market, you're going to be needing rock, normal toolboxes, and Master's toolboxes eventually. For the third one, you're going to need iron, normal toolboxes, and Master's toolboxes. And for this fourth one here, you're going to need fluorite, normal toolboxes, and eventually Master's toolbox. So immediately, it should come to your attention that these buildings all require one different resource for each one, but the rest of them will just need toolboxes and master's toolboxes. Now, the number of master's toolboxes varies depending on how high the level of the building is, but typically you should know master's toolboxes are quite hard to get. So if you're a free-to-play player and you're able to pick them up, definitely do so because the demand for them will progressively increase. Normal toolboxes, it actually doesn't require as much compared to the other resource. So you can see here it says 75,000 for this upgrade here, but 380,000 for the normal resource. So what you need is kind of like an even distribution of everything to upgrade across the board. Now for HP and attack aura buildings at the end here, these I often see as a waste as they don't give too much of a stat increase to your hero for the resources used. It will use a lot of your normal toolboxes and that may stop you from being able to upgrade other buildings. So I would always kind of steer away from building them until you really, really have nothing else to do. But typically you'll always want to be improving your homes. Now, it should be mentioned that not all Celestial Island resources are created equally. Of course, it might just seem like you want to get an even amount of wood and fluorite and iron and rock just so you can upgrade your buildings evenly. 
but that's actually not a smart idea. The reason is, eventually down the line, you will be putting Transcendence Heroes into these buildings. And you'll see all Transcendence Heroes put another Transcendence Hero in Tenant Spot 2 and Tenant Spot 4. And like we said earlier, Transcendence Heroes offer the biggest stat increase of any hero in the game. So what you will want to do is always prioritize the resource Rock for Tenant Spot 2 and the resource Fluorite for Tenant Spot 4 before prioritizing Tenant Spot 1 and Tenant Spot 3. You will see with my building here for Asmodel, it looks a little like that, as I have a hundred on building two and building four but if you look at building one this is only 54 plus five and this one here is only 76 plus five so you can see already that what i'm doing is prioritizing building two and building four and that's what you should do as well always prioritize rock and fluorite now if you're an early player typically you'll want to be prioritizing the one that corresponds with the hero that you are building so let's say you eventually want to build a sword flash on your account your second transcendence hero is likely to be a lord of fear aspen now he is in tenant spot two therefore you want to prioritize rock but maybe instead you're a player who likes to use Mockman. And you'll see that actually Jara is in Tenant Spot 4, and you'll eventually build Jara, and you'll definitely build her before the Sword Flash or the Arania in Tenant Spot 2. So you should probably prioritize Fluorite. So just the things you need to focus on there is which Transcendence Hero pairing, the one you will have as a homeowner and the one you have as a tenant, will be used, and therefore prioritize that particular resource. Some of you may realize if you're using LOEs, for example, as a homeowner, there's not much of a priority here, but Fluorite's typically okay because Carrie is a solid tenant. Now, how do we weigh up whether a hero is a good tenant or not? Does it just come down to the attack or HP of a hero? Well, yes and no. The key thing that differentiates heroes is whether they are transcendent or non-transcendent. Now, we already said that transcendent heroes are best, and they all have their own unique stats. So it's just important to know to prioritize transcendent heroes whenever you can. However, if you're not using a Transcendence Hero, they follow a different rule, which is contrary to what you might assume. Depending on the class of the hero, they offer a different increase. So, if you didn't know, Warriors, Mages, and Rangers all give the same boost, regardless of the hero's base stats or anything like that. And this boost is the highest you can get with a non-Transcendence Hero. Next is Priests. These give the next highest boost for attack. And then finally, it's Assassins. That might surprise you, as Assassins typically have quite high attack, but they actually give some of the worst stats in the Cloud Island for your homeowner heroes. So let's take that knowledge and apply it to some heroes here. So let's look at this Eloise. If you go and look at Tenant Spot 1, we have a Ranger, we have an Assassin, and we have a Warrior. Knowing this, we know it's best to go with Onkiramaru or Flora because they're Rangers and Warriors, and we can ignore the Ithaqua unless you really need her on your account because she's not going to give as good bonuses as the other two because she's an Assassin. For Tenant Spot 2, we have a Priest, Gustin, we have an Assassin, Sarja, and we have a Mage, Jara. You will remember, Priests are second best and Assassins are worst, so therefore we will go with the Mage, because Mages, Rangers, and Warriors give the best stats, so we would choose Jara. Go to Tenant Spot 3, we have two Mages here, Tix and Mim, so both of them are even, and Tenant Spot 3 also contains an Annabelle, who's a Priest. Tix is a phenomenal hero, very useful, and a Mage, and he's not light or dark like the Mim, so immediately the best choice. And Tenant Spot 4, we have a choice between two rangers here, which is Freya and Carry, and then in the middle, there's Amon Ra, who's a priest. So people typically choose Carry here, because she's a very strong hero and she's a ranger, and therefore offers the better bonuses. And that same principle can be applied to any hero whatsoever. You just have to follow the rule that assassins are the worst, priests second worst, and mages, warriors, and rangers are always the better picks. Now things don't just end there. Believe it or not, skins impact the power of your tenants as well. So if a tenant has a skin that offers an attack increase or a HP increase, they will be better than a hero from an equivalent class when it comes to Celestial Island bonuses. So one common example we see all the time is Tenant Spot 1 for Mockman. He has a normal copy of himself and Forkis. Now Forkis is a mage, Normal Mockman is a warrior, so they should be even on stats. There's no priority here, as both of them are kind of bad. And when it comes to having food available to build them, well, they're both dark heroes, so there's no struggle there choosing between them. 
So what's the one thing that sets them apart? It's skins. So you can see that the Forkis skin here, when upgraded to Legendary, gives a 6% attack increase. And that attack increase will impact the power of Forkis as a tenant. But not all attack increases do this. So one thing I also want to stress is you might go ahead and look at a hero like, let's say, Carrie, for example, and notice that she has an attack increase at Darkness Befall, which gets improved when we Void imprint it. Yeah, see, look, it's 35% here. And then here it's 25%. So you might think that that 10% attack increase actually comes into play. Surprisingly, those things don't actually come into play. It literally is just to do with the class of the hero. However, you know what does affect the power level of a hero? Their stone. So going back to this carry, you'll see she's got speed HP. That would be great for increasing the HP she gives in Celestial Island. However, if I wanted to go with as much attack as possible, I would go with an attack attack stone. So attack attack is typically the best stone to choose for a tenant as this maximizes the attack increase you have. However, there's one stone that does give the best of all worlds. So if you look at my Tussle Largo here, you can see she's got attack attack if I'm trying to maximize my attack damage, but I also have attack HP because it still gives 26% attack, but it also gives a 33% HP bonus, and that can be quite significant. So wearing this, let's Let's go take a look at our Asmodel the Dauntless's stats right now. He has 8.2 million attack and 494 million HP. If I go change Tussalago to wearing an attack HP stone, you'll notice his attack goes down and his HP goes up. So let's go ahead and put that on. You can see our HP increased on Tussalago, her attack went down. And now for Asmodel the Dauntless, his attack has gone down a little bit and his HP has gone up a little bit. Now, granted, as we said earlier, assassins aren't the world's best tenants, and she's not Void 4 or anything like that, so the change wasn't significant, but you can still see it made a little bit of a difference. So overall, that's something you need to bear in mind. As well, we have flags. Now, flags offer a really solid attack and HP increase, typically 24% and 30% when upgraded. However, if a flag matches the faction that a hero is in and you equip it to them, whether it's Splendid, Radiant, or Glittery, you get a bonus boost for that hero. So Tussalago has a light flag here. She's getting an extra 24% attack and 24% HP. Now that's fantastic for a tenant, however, this will also reduce her attack and HP in a fight, which is a little bit disappointing. That's not so bad though, because actually I'm not going to use her in fights, and even if I was, I don't really care because she's not a strong hero anyway, she's not upgraded anywhere, she's literally just here to be a solid tenant for Asmodel, so the more stats I can put on her, the better. Another cool thing that you can do is if you take a look at my Jara, my Jara is currently wearing a flag. She's three and one split, which actually maximizes our attack bonuses here. She's attack attack, and that is giving a ton of stats to Vesa. However, if I go to the formation menu, I can put together a lineup where Jara isn't wearing the flag and she gets the benefit of using Rui Scepter without the downside of wearing the flag. But if you go look at my Vessa, my Vessa's stats are still really, really high. And that's because it uses the stats of the Jara in my hero bag when assessing the tenant. So I still get all the bonuses from Cloud Island while still getting to use Jara without the downside of the flag. So preset lineups are also a way that you can improve the power level of your tenants. And that's how to use flags properly. So there you go. That's everything you need to know about tenants in Idle Heroes. You need a Void 4 to unlock the Cloud Island, and you need to know that Warriors, Mages, and Rangers give the best stats for non-transcendence tenants. If you wanted to go ahead and use a Priest or an Assassin, do bear in mind they don't give as good increases. Go with Attack Attack Stones or Attack HP. Get those flags to boost your stats, and the stronger you take the hero, whether it's in the Tree of Origin, whether it's through Void Imprints, they will give more and more stats. That's why you see people like me go ahead and Tree of Origin 3, a weird hero like an Asmodel. It's pretty important. Another thing worth bearing in mind, actually, before we go, is that actually the Awakened stats on your heroes also benefit them, which is pretty helpful. So the better Awakenings you have on your tenants, the better stat bonuses they'll give in the Cloud Island. Don't forget that skins also play a part in all of this, and I'll leave you with one cool fact that a lot of people don't know. If you have a Sword Flash as a tenant, she gives more stats than a Mystic Fairy Freya would. That's important because for Fairy Queen Vessa, she has Mystic Fairy Freya and Sword Flash in the same tenant spot. But that bonus from the Sword Flash being higher than the Freya is only true before you get to Tree of Origin. 
As soon as you start to put Tree of Origin improvements on a Mystic Fairy Freya, she actually gives more stats to that Fairy Queen Vessa than an equivalent Sword Flash of the same Tree of Origin level. Fun little fact. So there you go. If you have a Tree of Origin 2 Freya or a Tree of Origin 2 Sword Flash, you're actually getting less stats from the Sword Flash than you would from the Freya. But before the Tree of Origin's on there, Sword Flash gives higher ones. Don't ask me why that's the case. It just is. This game is strange like that. If you want more information about tenants, join our Discord. And also there's a great person in the community called Lexi who has a bot that can calculate the power level of a tenant for your hero. I can actually list the best tenants for you so you don't have to do all the stuff I've taught you today. You can go find that in the various Idle Hero Discords. Just join our Discord and ask around. I'm sure someone can point you in the right direction. Anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. If you have any more questions about tenants, let me know in the comment section down below. If you found this helpful, I'm really glad. And of course, keep up the good work, making your heroes stronger. And with this advice, hopefully your team is just that little bit better. I'll see you next time, folks. Have a good week and happy idling.